Good evening. It's Monday the 13th of February and it's time for the news on RIC2. The National Council today convened to discuss the latest developments on the Cyprus issue and the prospects of a second Geneva Conference on Security and Guarantees. In the shadow of strong opposition by centrist parties on the strategy of President Anastasiades, as well as overwhelming reaction by the Turkish Cypriot leadership to the passing of an amendment calling for the celebrating, teaching and reference to the referendum on union with Greece held in 1950. Following a frosty three-hour meeting, during which Democratic Party President Nikolas Babulobulos submitted a 20-page document with proposals for the change of national strategy on the Cyprus issue, as well as relevant proposals from Socialist Adek, the National Council issued a rare, it might recently be said, joint statement on the Turkish-Cypriot reaction to the passing of the Unionist Referendum Amendment celebration. Responding to a warning by the Turkish Cypriot side that it will consider a temporary withdrawal from the talks, the body of political leaders condemned what they called a deliberate distortion by the Turkish Cypriot community, which argued that the amendment was a re-emergence by the Greek Cypriot side of the Enosis or Union strategy with Greece. The National Council made clear that such an issue was not considered, nor will it ever be, with the Greek Cypriot side rejecting any form of settlement that leads to the division of the island. It further reiterates that the solution being sought is the one based on relevant Security Council and UN General Assembly resolutions, as well as numerous National Council unanimous decisions. On Saturday, the Turkish Cypriot leader had demanded the withdrawal of the amendment, asking President Anastasiades to take immediate action to this end. 95.7% of the Greek Cypriot community voted in favour of union with Greece in the referendum, which took the form of a signature campaign in secret, as Cyprus was still under British rule. Meanwhile, on the prospects of a second Geneva conference, there seemed to be consensus between political leaders that it could not take place under the shadow of the Turkish demand for granting the four EU fundamental freedoms to Turkish citizens in Cyprus following a settlement. President Anastasiades responded in writing to the Turkish Cypriot leader on the voting of the Unionist Referendum Amendment, noting that if the Turkish Cypriot community can be so sensitive to the mere reference of a historical fact, it's even more provoking for the Greek Cypriot side than celebrations taking place each year on the anniversary of the 1974 Turkish invasion. He further notes that the unanimous National Council decision does not just refute the arguments of the Turkish Cypriot side, but furthermore indicates the determination of the Greek Cypriot side to continue the dialogue based on the relevant General Assembly resolutions and Security Council decisions, as well as all unanimous National Council decisions throughout its history. The decision on the mere reference of a historical fact, President Anastasiades added, cannot be misconstrued as a change of policy by the Greek Cypriot side on the settlement being sought. He further made clear that he will not allow anyone to question the honest intentions of the Greek Cypriot side in efforts at reaching a solution acceptable by both sides, an intention clear for all to see at the negotiating table. The president stressed that the Greek Cypriot side could be just as provoked by the Turkish Cypriot celebration of the Turkish invasion, which led to occupation and today's unacceptable status quo. In the same framework, what honest intention is there, he noted, in celebrations for the illegal establishment of a breakaway pseudo-state, which aimed at the secession of part of the island and its ultimate division? The President of the Republic noted that at the negotiating table, he has repeatedly and practically proven the genuine and honest will of the Greek Cypriot side to seek a solution on the basis of what has been previously agreed, a settlement not of winners and losers, but one that responds to the concerns and expectations of both Greek and Turkish Cypriots. In his letter to Mustafa Kenji, President Anastasiades also expressed the conviction that if everyone desires to achieve the same goal, they have to work with determination, abandoning all pretexts, 
and in particular unacceptable demands and conditions that do not serve the interests of either community. In their remarks following the meeting, National Council leaders focused on the unionist amendment reactions. Ruling Democratic rally leader Verov Neofidu referred to the unanimous leader's decision, adding, however, that the approval of the amendment to celebrate the referendum on union with Greece was out of touch with today's conditions and gave the pretext for malicious misinterpretations. On the general discussion, Neo Fidu said that there was an exhaustive exchange on what happened after Geneva, including the technocratic security meeting at Mont Pelerin and the issue that has come up with the Turkish Four Freedoms demand. The VC leader stressed that Turkey is aiming at a backdoor entry to the EU. Left-wing Agel General Secretary Andros Gibriano expressed regret over the dimensions that the unionist amendment issue has taken and called on the Turkish Cypriot leader to continue on his negotiating course with President Anastasiades, adding that the Greek Cypriot side could have also taken advantage of extreme remarks and actions by the Turkish Cypriot side. On the prospects of the talks, the Agel leader said that there is a real danger that the process will run off its rails, ending in deadlock, as negotiations are moving very slowly. He noted that the Greek Cypriot side's focus should turn to the internal aspects with the goal of having a settlement within reach. Opposition Digo President Nikolas Babudopoulos said that the parliamentary decision on the unionist amendment was absolutely lawful and in any case was not the end of the world. He referred to Turkish Cypriot reactions as serving other experiences. On the way forward in negotiations, Babudopoulos said 30 days following the Geneva failure, the Greek Cypriot side should move to redefine its strategy and express the hope that President Anastasiades will take into account proposals towards this end, submitted in a lengthy document. He stressed that the document included ways of shielding the Republic of Cyprus against its undermining. Socialist Adeka leader Marinos Sizobolos expressed the view that the Turkish Cypriot side aimed at freezing the current process and noted the lack of progress. As a counter, he added, Turkey is bringing to the table its demands for the four basic freedoms and an increase to Turkish Cypriot participation in governance. On the unionist amendment, Sizobolos said the dimensions that the issue has taken are aimed at misinformation and distorting events. Other leaders moved along the same lines, particularly on the Unionist Amendment reactions, as well as the lack of necessary progress or fertile ground for a second Geneva Conference on Security and Guarantees. And now a look at tomorrow's weather. Mostly sunny, but the occasional cloud could bring along some isolated local showers and light snowfalls over the mountains. Winds will be light to moderate easterly to northeasterly, falls 3 to 4 over slight seas. Temperatures will reach 12 Celsius inland, 14 in coastal regions and 2 over the mountains. The depth of snow is 45 centimetres on Mount Olympus and 35 over the Trodos Square. That's all for today. Join us tomorrow again for more news in English. Have a very good evening.